Hi everybody and welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to our quick fire snapshot 5 minute review of Yoku's Island Express that launched today, May 29th across the PC and all of the usual consoles. As usual, and for full disclosure, we received an advanced copy gifted to us by the publisher with the captured footage here having been taken from the Nintendo Switch. Fans of the channel will know we're big fans of the Metroidvania genre and there's no doubting we've been spoilt for choice of late within the independent gaming world via the likes of Owlboy, Steam World Dig 2, and Hollow Knight to name but a few. While great fun to play with each of these offering their own visual flair and artistic direction, in Yoku's Island Express we have the delivery of a gaming mechanic that's utterly fresh and unique that once again helps move the genre into an entirely new direction. Villa Gorilla's trick with Yoku comes from the implementation of a pinball inspired gaming experience where exploration and boss battles, as they can loosely be called, come via the yellow and blue coloured flippers, bumpers, railings and tunnels that move you and your ball about the playing surface. From a story front, you play as Yoku, a dung beetle recently appointed to serve as postmaster on the idyllic island of Mokomanu, an island you'll soon discover has a few problems that need taken care of. The controls are simple enough with a Nintendo Switch version using the left and right shoulder buttons to activate the flippers and the analogue stick to control your player character. As you play, you're constantly collecting fruit which acts as the in-game currency to be spent unlocking hidden flippers to enable you to gain access to new areas of the map. Luckily, such fruit is generally in plentiful supply, and as you play, your wallet expands to hold more and more. On the odd occasions where such items are lacking, taking a few moments within the game's more traditional static pinballing table sections is usually all that's required to stock up on enough things to move forward. Like every quality Metroidvania, there are puzzle sections and areas of platforming, in this case via the pinball that are tricky and challenging, particularly towards the latter part of the game. That all being said, we're not talking a Celeste level of difficulty and in general, the effort to challenge ratio feels spot on about 90% of the time. One particular section involving a number of ropes you have to chain together was one moment where the blood pressure rose above what's comfortable. In this area, missing just one part of the sequence has you falling back down the screen, having to start it all over again from the beginning, which after a few attempts became somewhat tiresome. While for some the game might lack an overriding narrative, for us that's not a problem. Our time spent with Yoku while playing alone or with others is perhaps best described as one long session of wide-eyed smiles, particular with younger players who seem to gel and find an honest affinity with the NPCs and easy to follow dialogue. One other thing, did we mention so far how cute this game looks and sounds? The music is absolutely fantastic, ranging from a perfect Disney feature film soundtrack to the more exotic jazz bass sections we enjoyed perhaps a little bit too much by way of throwing some shapes across the living room while the on-screen action was at a standstill. Aside from certain aspects on the overall difficulty, another slight criticism comes from having to go back over the main routes to and from the island's central hub, which at times can feel a tad samey and repetitive. Unlike a usual platformer, you can't simply make your way through a completed section. Here you need to replay the same table multiple times, and with some of the more tricky ones it can mean the game's flow becomes disrupted as you fail to get the right angle off the flipper again and again and again. This slight issue is fully resolved once you unlock the super wonderful beeline fast travel system, this being yet another particular highlight. Putting such small matters aside, for us, Yoku's Island Express has made its way into our top three games of the year so far. While six or so hours long, there's room for more playtime if you fancy going through the various subquests, delivering letters and opening all the treasure chests found throughout the island. As should be fairly clear, we're more than happy to recommend this one to anyone with an interest in the genre genre or those coming across this type of game for the first time. At its core we have a wonderfully charming title that deftly executes against its premise with a wholly original gameplay loop that remains fresh, exciting and different right up until the end point. Couple this with the aesthetic that's as cute as a button in Yoku's Island Express, Villa Gorilla have delivered a triumph that plays as well on the Switch in portable mode as it does while docked to your TV. And for our money, it's certainly going to be one of the most delightful and enjoyable games of the year. And with that concluding our review here today, we're really keen and interested to see if you're planning on picking this one up. If so, please let us know in the comments. If you haven't already and want to see more of these type of snappy five minute reviews, then why not subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with us here at Get Indie Gaming. Many thanks for stopping by and we look forward to seeing you all again here soon for more indie games videos.